Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, gentlemen, thank you both for being here today. Uh, on November the 12th, the President uh, answered the question, is ISIS gaining strength, by saying, I don't think they're gaining strength, and I believe we've contained them. Now, two weeks before that interview in Ankara, we saw two bombs kill 102 people. In the Sinai, we saw 224 people uh, lose their lives when the Russian jetliner was down. On the day of his interview in Beirut, two suicide bombers uh, killed 43. And then the day after his interview, a wave of six terrorist attacks killed uh, 130 in Paris. And then on December 2, 14 Americans were killed. Right now, in another committee hearing down at Judiciary Committee, I, I stepped in for a minute before I came back here, Director Comey said that uh, America's at its highest threat level since 9-11. So I'm trying to square a statement made by our President on November 12th that they're not gaining strength and that we have contained them with a comment that you made in the opening, I think, in response to uh, Chairman, the Chairman's question about how we contain them. What am I missing in terms of you saying that we haven't contained them, the President says that we have, and that they're not gaining strength with the events that we've, I've just summarized there? Uh, Secretary Carter, I'll start with you, and then General Selva. Um, well, uh, we have to uh, uh, defeat ISIL. Uh, and, I agree with that, but that, that, a, a that, part that, of it is right, excuse me, because I want to try to stick to the time. A, a part of it has to do with the President acknowledging the current situation. Do you agree with this characterization that they're not gaining strength? The, the, the President has asked me and asked uh, our military leaders uh, to give him recommendations and to keep giving him recommendations to defeat ISIL. That, and he has approved all the ones that we've taken to him. We expect to take more. And I think Secretary that's the Secretary Carter, that's the have, have you thing. told the President uh, that they're not gaining strength and that we've contained them? I have not used that. Uh, General Dunford uh, said last, talked about tactical containment versus strategic containment, if we're going to use that word. I, I kind of like the word defeat myself, uh, Senator. Um, uh, General Self, I want to ask you a question about uh, some of the, uh, the airstrikes. Uh, I know that uh, you were talking about the rules of engagement, uh, and it seems to make sense to try and protect the civilian drivers and the tankers, et cetera. Back in June, the military officials acknowledged that 75 percent of the planes uh, flying combat missions returned without dropping their weapons. You, in response to Senator Ayotte's question, said that that's now about 40 percent. What's changed? Senator, we've increased the number of deliberate strikes, pre-planned, designated targets, as opposed to having airplanes looking for dynamic targets in the environment. We have sufficient air power in the region to accomplish both, but in any case of dynamic targeting, some of those airplanes are always going to come back with their ordnance because targets don't present themselves. Thank you. And uh, a former deputy uh, director, Mike Morrill, the CIA, uh, made in a comment on November the 25th that we didn't go after oil wells, actually hitting oil wells that ISIS controls because we didn't want to do environmental damage and we didn't want to destroy infrastructure. Are those still key factors in whether or not you go after uh, ISIS targets? I don't know of the rules of engagement that he's talking about, but as we develop deliberate targets, we do bring environmental considerations into the, the factors that we consider, but they do not limit us from striking the infrastructure. They just change the way we strike it. So we try to do as, as little environmental damage as possible, but still limit the capacity of the well to produce. Um, and, and Secretary Carter, maybe just to, to close out with this, just to go back to, to defining the problem. If we shift, and, and you made the, the distinction between tactical and strategic containment, but if we shift to a global perspective uh, away from the narrow focus of maybe tactically what we're doing in Iraq and Syria, is there any grounds for describing ISIS as contained? I'll, I'll let uh, General Dunford, who's not here, uh, speak for himself. Uh, I uh, described, and, and I think we need to be concerned about, we've talked about 
uh, metastasis to the homeland, and we've talked about the necessity of getting the parent tumor. Uh, we have not discussed as much the necessity of going after ISIL elsewhere. I mentioned Libya. We took out its leader in Libya. Uh, we're going to have to do more in Libya. Uh, ISIL is um, uh, becoming a magnet for, some, for groups that previously existed in some cases who, that are now rebranding themselves as ISIL. Um, but it's worse than that because in the, they're also gaining energy from the movement in Iraq and, and Syria, which is why we need to destroy it in Iraq and Syria. Uh, but this is a worldwide phenomenon. Um, and I've talked to leaders, I was recently talking to some leaders in Southeast Asia, uh, actually, about many things. Uh, but one of the things they raised is concern about uh, little patches of ISIL and self-radicalization of the kind that we, uh, we find. So in the Internet age and the, and the social media age, uh, terrorism uh, doesn't have any geographic bounds. So I think we have to recognize that while we need to attack it geographically on the ground in Syria and Iraq, that is necessary. It's not sufficient. Thank you, Mr. Chair.